Hey guys, welcome to Little Helpful Files. My name is Lindsay and we do cash budgeting, mini savings, and just life in general all through the glory and by the grace of God. And if you are tuning back in, this is part two of our pregnancy and birth story. So I wanted to break this into two videos because I wanted to have one just addressing and discussing our whole diagnosis with IUGR. And then I wanted to have this video where I could just go through our birth story and how everything went while it's still fresh in my mind. Um, so if you are interested in that, please stay tuned. Otherwise, I'd love it if you would check out some of my other content and videos. So let's go ahead and kind of go through the rest of the story and um, fill you guys in on what we ended up having. So at the last video on part one, I ended at the point where I was in the hospital and I was getting hooked up to the NST machines so that baby could be tracked um, and everything could be monitored until they were ready to induce me. Now, I will just be completely transparent with you guys. I was a little bit fearful of being induced. Um, I was not induced with either of my other two and with my daughter, I went completely natural at home and that was what I had been prepared for. So switching everything was really challenging for me mentally, but I also knew that the main priority was delivering a healthy baby. So to me, you know, I was willing to go through whatever was needed to make sure that we could have the best outcome possible. So when the doctor started to come in to talk through everything with induction, of course, you know, they had to go through kind of like all the scenarios. And with the fact that baby was measuring around four pounds, they were all letting us know that this was going to be a very slow process and that they were going to have to wait and see how baby was handling contractions and how baby's heart rate looked. That was the biggest thing with all of it. Um, just with baby being small and me being at 37 weeks, you know, they really wanted to make sure that they progress things slow, but also to mimic natural labor um, as much as possible. So they pretty much waited, I think it was till about five o'clock to get things started. And instead of, you know, just starting off with um, something they can do like a pill or they can do something that softens your cervix. And then they also, of course, do Pitocin. They chose to start with the cervix softener, so Cervidil. So the benefit to doing this is that it could be inserted and also removed. So if baby's heart rate started to drop or they didn't like the way baby was reacting to the contractions, they had the ability to remove it. And then we would of course have to pivot and switch to C-section. They prepared me for that being you know, a possible outcome. So I was totally fine with it. Um, I thought that was the best option as well because we didn't know, you know how things were gonna progress. So I had up to 12 hours with this that would allow everything to soften. I was only about one centimeter dilated and I think I was still only like 50% of face at that point. So <clears throat> my body was not quite ready, even though I had been having contractions since 27 weeks, they obviously were doing nothing. <laughs> um, so it was a little discouraging, but it was okay. I knew that, so they started at 5 p.m. So we had until 5 a.m. to see if that was really, you know, do, gonna do anything or kickstart labor. Um, by that point, you know, again, I had been having contractions, but they were not very long. They were not very strong. They were not coming close enough together. So um, when they came back in at five to check me, I believe I was only at like three centimeters. So they did discuss that they were going to start the Pitocin. However, they normally start Pitocin at like the two ml, I think. And they were only going to do one and they were on, only going to increase it by one because again, they really wanted to take things slow. And they also told us that they could just stop if at any point things were not looking good. So that took a little while um, while we were kind of waiting. So again, I was having more contractions. They were starting to come a little bit closer together and a little bit longer, but they still were short. And I could just tell they weren't really doing a whole lot to you know change or progress labor in the way that it needed to be. When they came back, they checked me again and I was still about... I think three centimeters. I don't think I had progressed much at all. So that at that point, I think it was like nine. Um, by the time they finally were ready to start the Pitocin, nine or 10, I can't remember. And, you know, again, I was like, oh, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but they also had to give me the um, uh, antibiotic for the group B strep because I was positive for that. So they started the Pitocin at the same time they started the penicillin and that penicillin burns so it went through my hand 
and it was just very painful so I don't know my husband joked like maybe that distracted me enough I really didn't notice the Pitocin um, changing my contractions a whole lot I felt that they were actually progressing quite you know gradually or naturally um, they definitely were starting to come a lot closer together and um, they were picking up a little bit but still you know not anything to where I knew that they were really like moving things along in the way they needed to be so they ended up upping my dose by one more so I was at the 2 ml and you know just kind of trying to be as mobile as possible but it was challenging I had to be on the monitors um, and the wireless monitor actually I totally forgot about that part so I tried the wireless monitor overnight because they knew that I wanted to do natural and they were all so accommodating and so sweet they were you know doing the best that they could with the given scenario obviously um, but overnight the baby had a couple decelerations and they said that I couldn't continue on the wireless monitor because they really needed to make sure that they were getting you know accurate um, readings of the baby I mean they were still accurate but I guess it's like harder for the wireless thing like kind of glitches sometimes and they had to make sure they were getting like the full reading so I had to be on the monitor hooked up which limited me I couldn't really walk around I had to stay pretty close to the bed but I still was able to use the birthing ball and be up and moving um, throughout that so you know that's kind of what I was doing after they did the second dose of the Pitocin at the two mil and um, you know my midwife came which I'm so grateful for because she's just amazing and definitely was helpful to have my husband and her there as well and she suggested the peanut which the peanut is definitely helpful I think it helped um, really get baby in the right place and also open up my cervix and everything um, so I did that for I think like 30 minutes on each side and at that point they came in and checked me and I was at four centimeters and so they asked if they could break my water which is so crazy because again nothing about this pregnancy or this delivery was similar to my other two with both my other two my water actually broke first on its own total gush like you see in the movie um thankfully I was home both times but that actually happened before contractions started for me so I've never had them have to break my water or I've never had contractions starting, you know, prior. So I was fine with them breaking the water. You know, I talked to my midwife and, you know, she said that that will definitely help to encourage labor along. So I think that was at like 12.59 or something or, you know, right around, like right between 12.50 and 1. They came in, like I said, four centimeters and they decided to break my water. After that, <laughs> things quickly progressed. Like, I was not prepared, I guess, mentally, because, you know, normally, like I said, my water breaks, and I have a period of time where I don't really have anything happening, then contractions start, and it's kind of slow, and it takes a while till I get to that point where I then go into, like, the active labor and transition and delivery. That part usually goes fast for me. It's usually, usually the getting to that point that is slow. And so knowing that I was only at four centimeters, I just was like prepared for a while to, you know, be having contractions and laboring. So um, I changed the positions on the bed so that I could be more like facing the back of the bed. And the contractions really started to become intense, like very intense. And I was very sweaty <laughs> and needing my husband and needing my midwife's help to, you know, hold their hand, hold my husband's hand, have the counter pressure. It just started to come on one on top of the other and these contractions were super intense and I'm like sweating I think I started having like ice cubes that I needed um, at one point I asked for them to shave my hair off <laughs> because I was so hot and like it was bothering me it was just like everywhere um, I was just like so irritable and I was not getting a break so I didn't really realize that things were progressing as fast as they were, but my midwife, of course, was on it and knew. So she kind of, at some point then, decided to like let the nurse know like, hey, you need to start getting things ready. Um, so from the time that they broke my water until the time that we had our daughter, which it is a girl, so I didn't tell you guys that in the first video, but it was less than an hour. <laughs> Um, and it was just so emotional and so beautiful and so amazing. We, we all actually thought it was a boy. Um, my children and my husband and I, we thought it was a boy. So having um, her come out, she's such a tiny little peanut. <laughs> she is about five pounds and 
I'm just really grateful because they were able to place her right on me as soon as she was born and I was just crying and asking everybody like she's okay and they all kept reassuring me like you know she's okay she's fine I was very much prepared for her to have to be in NICU um, because I know you know with her being smaller with us not knowing if everything was fully developed and all that like I, I just was prepared for you know every scenario and um, thankfully she didn't have to do that now of course she did have a lot of different checks and things that they had to do throughout the night um, because she is small and they wanted to make sure that she was going to be able to be released you know from the hospital but it was a beautiful and overwhelming moment again that I just kept praising and thanking the Lord that our daughter was born that she was healthy and that she was in our arms I think that was the biggest relief for me um, knowing that I had been having all of these different moments of worry and stress and concerns over her well-being in the womb it was so much relief to have her finally in our arms and to know that she was okay and that she was here um, and she was ready like that's what you know my midwife also kept saying just the way that she looked like it's crazy to me because the growth the last growth scan that we had was Thursday okay and I went in to be no the last growth scan we had was Friday is that right yeah and she was measuring at four pounds and then we had her Saturday afternoon and she weighed five pounds two ounces so just goes to show you that you never know <laughs> um what god can do because that was three different ultrasounds that we had had in two weeks that all confirmed the same size so very um just wonderful beautiful testimony there to see that she was a pound heavier and she was ready to go she was ready to nurse she her color changed right away she was you know crying and moving everything was just beautiful everything was just as it should be and it gave such reassurance and my husband and I were just full of emotion and full of joy and just so many things, so many feelings and just really, really, truly grateful. I was grateful for the team there, the doctors there, the midwives, everybody was amazing. And I'm just so glad that we ended up changing, that we ended up getting a second opinion, that we ended up where we were because again it just felt that god orchestrated each and every aspect of it and that's actually the hospital where my sister worked so i got to see her then at the end before we were discharged um it just was truly amazing and a beautiful beautiful blessing that we just cannot express how thankful and grateful we are at how everything went um you know we know that it could have been so many different scenarios so many different outcomes but we are thankful that we moved forward when we did and that she was able to be induced and born when she was because she was ready she was ready to come out and she has been a great eater so you can just tell she came out small but mighty indeed um, and our kids are so excited to have welcomed her into the family and we're all of course adjusting but we are just beyond grateful that she is here and you know I hope that you guys enjoy the story, but if you are pregnant, if you are going through this, I hope that this gives you some encouragement as well. Um, don't be afraid of changing things within your birth plan. One of the midwives made a joke that it's a birth preference. And that is a good point because you really don't ever know how birth and labor is going to go. And, you know, I definitely had to get out of my own mind with that. I had to pray and I really had to rely on God's strength getting me through all of this. I just continued to ask Jesus to please help me to, you know, comfort me and to get me through and just guide me because it was really challenging at so many different points. But again, the Lord was there. He was helping us through it all. He um, is just beyond faithful, you know, no matter what you're walking through, no matter what you're going through. He'll help you get through it. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful um, that we, you know, did what we did to make sure that we were heard and that we were taken serious. And I'm grateful that I'm able to share this story and this testimony. That is one of the things afterwards that I made sure to tell the Lord that I would share the story because you just don't ever know how it might impact or help somebody else. 
um, that might be walking through, you know, a very similar scenario. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. I thank you all for taking the time as always to watch this video. If you please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my content, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, you may see again videos here or there. I'm not really sure what my video content posting will be over the next couple weeks. I am going to be taking some time to just rest and to enjoy and to be with the family but i wanted to give you guys this update and i wanted to give you all um the story while it was fresh in my mind but i also wanted to thank you because i know so many of you all were praying for us i know so many of you guys have reached out and truly like you can just see the power in the prayers we felt it we knew we had so many people um that were just concerned for us and praying for us between you guys and our family and our church and all of our friends, I'm beyond thankful for it. Um, that continued to help us, you know, fight and continued to help us push through. And I'm just grateful that I'm able to come, you know, on and share and update you all with the way the Lord kind of worked in this whole story and scenario. And we thank you guys so much. We love you all and your support is um, invaluable to us, truly. So I'm grateful for this community and I look forward to seeing y'all in a video soon. I hope that you continue to enjoy the rest of your week and may God bring you so many blessings. I'll talk to you all soon.